This grungy, grainy style of image is often called the Xerox effect because of its similarity to old photocopied images. The image is given a high contrast black and white appearance with shading generated by large grainy noise textures. Follow along with this tutorial to discover which combination of filters achieve this look and how you can customise the final appearance with my free Duotone gradient presets. So first we need a Photoshop document to work on. I'm using a canvas of 2000 by 2500 pixels in RGB mode. We also need an image to apply the effect to. This free image of a woman wearing a black crew neck shirt by Ione Houst on Unsplash.com has some interesting contrast between the illuminated and shaded parts of the face, which translates well into the grainy effect. Open the image and use Command and A to select all, followed by Command and C to copy. Paste with Command and V in the main document and scale to size with the Command and T shortcut for transform. Right click the layer in the layers panel and convert to smart object. This will preserve all the edits so we can adjust them later. The first of those edits is to flatten the contrast with shadows and highlights under the image and adjustments menu. Crank up the shadows to the max then click OK. Next go to filter, noise and median, enter 5 pixels. This step slightly blurs the image to take the rough edges off the final effect. Add a new layer to the layer stack then set up the foreground colour with a mid grey. This can be done by entering 50 in the B field of HSB for brightness. Use the Alt and Backspace shortcut to fill the canvas with this grey foreground colour. An alternative method is to use the Edit and Fill command, which has a preset for 50% grey. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery to apply some grainy texturing to this grey layer. Under the Sketch folder, choose Reticulation. Set the density to 25 as the midpoint. The other options don't have any effect on the grey background. The reason we've chosen reticulation over a simple noise or film grain effect is reticulation has a nice organic feel to it, a little like the Turing effect. Check out my video on that for more details. The other grain filters are a little too grainy. Add a threshold adjustment layer, then select the grey layer and reduce its opacity. You'll see the original image begin to emerge with the shading made up of the grainy texture. This reticulation grain is quite fine. If it's scaled up, you can see that organic texturing I was talking about. Use Command and T for transform and scale to 200%. You can see it has somewhat of an ink stamp look to it as the blobs merge into each other. You can fine tune the shading and contrast by adjusting the threshold layer. Balance this with the opacity of the grey layer to determine the right amount of grain. A duo turn effect is a nice way to finish off the effect with some colour. I'll first show you how to do it manually, but stick around to see a few more examples using my free Duotone gradient presets. Click the threshold layer, then add a gradient map adjustment layer so it's placed above it in the layer stack. The left side of the gradient is applied to the blacks. Find a mid blue colour. I ended up with 323243. For the highlights I found a pale beige of CCC2A6, but you can choose any two colour combinations you want. Because we made this effect with a smart object, everything can be altered. Double click the smart object thumbnail to load its contents and replace the image. This weird skull by Mattis Volkwardsen on Unsplash.com also has some nice contrast to it with light and dark areas, so it'll work well with this effect. Select all, copy, paste and transform to place it into the smart object. This image is cropped a little too tightly, but the fancy new AI features in Photoshop can help solve that. Grab the marquee tool and make a selection of the surrounding areas, holding shift to add to the selection. In the contextual toolbar, choose generative fill with no prompt to let Photoshop fill in the gaps. It may take a few generations to find the best head shape, but amazingly we can accomplish something in seconds that would have taken some serious painting work just a few years ago. Use the command and E shortcut to merge this generative fill layer into the original skull to permanently apply it, just to cut down on the file size. Save and close the smart object to return back to the main document and see the effect has been updated with the new image, albeit slightly cropped because of how the original image was scaled. Use Command and T to fit this new image onto the canvas. Adjust the opacity of the grey layer to determine how much grain to apply to this new image. Balance that with the threshold layer to find the perfect contrast. Click the link in the description to download my free Duotone gradient presets from my Spoon Graphics website. You'll then have access to loads of colour combos that can be applied to your images. 
This dark blue to red gradient matches this image pretty well, giving it a retro horror movie vibe. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.